Rest but care, seven pros and cons. Hi, my name is Jen Avellaneta, and I just wanna share with you a little bit about our experience with rest but care as a foster parent over the past 16 years. Before we get started, I wanna make sure that you get a chance to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Make sure to leave me a comment below if you did subscribe, and I will make sure to respond back to you. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started. This video today is for foster parents or maybe potential foster parents. If you don't know if you want to do respite care or maybe you are getting ready to get licensed and you're wondering if you wanna do emergency care, if you wanna do long-term, short-term, or maybe you are even considering respite care. Hopefully this will help you. By the end of this video, you will have a deeper understanding of what respite care is and if maybe potentially it's something that you wanna do. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where I will share my final thoughts. So let's start with the pros of doing respite care as a foster parent. And the first pro to doing respite care is it is a really great way for foster parents to test the waters of what foster care is really like. A lot of times we may read a ton of books, and I say this a lot on this uh, channel, we may read books, we may get lots of information, we may have been around a lot of foster kids growing up, but until we actually become a foster parent, we don't know what it's actually like. We don't know what the kids are gonna be like or what it's gonna be like to work with our department or with the state that we're licensed from. And so getting licensed as a foster parent who does respite is really a great way to test the waters. You get a child without having the commitment of knowing that you could potentially have that child for a year or two years. And it gives you an opportunity to really understand the system and foster care and what it's like without committing long term. The second pro of doing respite as a foster parent is this you make some amazing connections as a respite worker. This past summer, we've had quite a few foster respite placements and um, we just have met the neatest families. It has been awesome to connect and really to hear the stories of these foster parents and why they chose to take placements and become licensed. And a lot of times these connections can be lasting connections. They may be weaved through in other situations later down your foster care journey Journey. You never know what God wants to do through another foster family and you as you get ready to meet them and do respite for them. The third pro about doing respite care as a foster parent is that you get these little snapshots of the kids. If you do long-term foster care, you may have the same child or two children for years and years, at least in my state where kids tend to stay in care for a long time uh, without getting permanency. Um, and you get this quick snapshot. So you may have one child for a week and another one for a weekend, and you get to see different kids, different age groups, different behaviors. And that gives you a really quick um, uh, idea of what different kids are like, um, their personalities, how they respond to maybe the trauma that was in their life. And it gives you a really big, fuller, big picture understanding of the kids that are actually in foster care. The fourth pro about doing respite as a foster parent is that potentially you may be stopping the disruption of a placement. And what I mean by that is you may have a foster parent that feels burnout. And there's a video about burnout below. I'll try to link it below if you are a foster parent and you're feeling burnout. And um, that, that family may potentially displace that child, return it back into the system, um, choose not to continue fostering it. And by you doing respite, even if it's just for a short time, like a couple of days, you may be stopping the displacement of that child. So that child may be able to remain in that placement for a lot longer. And that is better for the child. That is better for the foster family. And you may have a piece. You may not see the results of it, but you may potentially um, help that, you, that foster family stay together. And that is a really, really good thing. The fifth pro about fostering and respite care is this, 
that you know exactly when a child is going to come into your home and when a child is going to leave your home. And that might kind of sound silly, like who cares, does it matter? But the world of foster care, if you're licensed as a foster parent, you know that it is a roller coaster. I say that all the time. You don't know, like last week we got a call late at night uh, for a placement and you don't know when your world is gonna shift. To have another human um, and, and a child potentially that has gone through trauma in your home is a big deal. And then to adjust and adapt and work your family to meet the interests of that child and then to have that child sometimes within an hour notice to leave that changes the dynamics of your family of maybe your marriage or your children that are already in your home and that can be fun and exciting and like kind of a wild ride sometimes but there are times and this is the example of me this summer wanting to know okay from this day to this day we are going to have a placement. They're going to come here and they're going to leave here. And I can work my schedule. I could work vacations or, um, you know, uh, ballet or whatever it is that our family is doing around these respite placements. The six pro about doing respite uh, as a foster placement is this. When a child comes into your home, you get more of a heads up. You know, again, maybe weeks or even months down the road, when a child is coming, you can plan, you can prepare, you can be able to buy what you need for that child. You can prepare your kids that are already in your home. You can um, contact the foster family and discuss with them about that child. You can get more information. You can prepare emotionally. You can go on dates with your husband to prepare for the time that you are going to invest when the child is there. And again, having a heads up for when that child is coming can be a big asset and a benefit to the foster family. The seventh pro of being a foster parent who does respite is this, that you sometimes get to be the fun person, right? It is like going to grandma's for the weekend that grandma gets to spoil the kids or, you know, they get to invest in the kids in a different way than if you were doing the day to day over and over for weeks and months and years at a time. You get to really target and show affection and love and attention. You get to take him to the zoo and to the park and all these fun places. And maybe the, the current foster family isn't able to do that. Maybe their work schedule, maybe the child is in daycare all day. Maybe um, that child is in the middle of visits and so there's like trauma responses in the current home that they're in. When they come into respite, you can devote all of your time and attention on that child. And that can feel really fulfilling as a foster parent to just pour into these kids. And my guess is as a foster child, it can feel really awesome to know that you are the center, even if it's for a week or two, to feel so loved and invested in that their lives potentially could change forever, that they will always remember the time in your home if you so choose to go out and do respite care. Okay, so now I'm going to share really quickly seven cons maybe of respite care. And the first is that sometimes it can be hard. It can be hard to adjust rapidly to a child, to um, to a situation, to behaviors. Uh, if there's behaviors, a child comes into your care and it almost sometimes feels like they just get comfortable. They just stop feeling anxious. They just um, start learning your routine and your schedule and getting to know you and you build that connection. And the moment that you do, they go back to their other home with their foster family or their biological family. And so in that sense, it can be a little bit hard as a respite worker. Those connections still matter. They're still valuable to that child. Uh, but it is something to prepare your heart for, to know that just because a child maybe is only going to be there for a weekend, to not think that you're not going to get attached or you're not going to connect because there are kids this summer that I just felt like they were instantly, like they were like my uh, nieces. Um, they just bonded instantly to our family. And so it can be hard when those bonds are broken after that child leaves. 
The second potential con to doing respite care is this. It's actually the opposite. So instead of bonding and connecting, sometimes there are kids that when they come into respite care, they don't bond. They don't connect with you. Um, they don't, they're, they've been moved maybe a lot. They've had visits and gone back and forth or come in and out of foster care, that that attachment is broken. And so they're not about to trust you as a respite worker. And so they maybe don't want to show affection. They maybe don't feel warm and cuddly and affectionate and they just want to be left alone and honestly those are the hardest respite um, situations where the kids don't attach and they don't trust it's understandable with some of the things that these kids have come through and um, maybe it's good in a way that they're setting healthy boundaries um, but it can be a little bit hard as a foster parent if that is the situation for the child that you are doing respite for the third potential con to doing respite care is this, that when you do a long-term uh, care for a foster child, often those kids come into your home, they kind of adapt to your schedule, to your life, to um, really how you're already living. When you do respite, and maybe this is just me, but when we do respite, our family, actually it's the opposite. Our family really shifts and pivots and caters to the child coming into care. And I think that's a good thing because that's the child that got removed from the foster home, that got removed from the bio family, and they need that time and attention. Um, but it's also can be super hard because your family does pivot and have to really focus on that child for the amount of time that it's in your home. The fifth con to respite care is unlike a long-term placement that kids come into your home and you adjust and adapt and maybe it's not working. Maybe the child is not bonding. Maybe you're both having a really hard time. You sought the therapist, you sought help and talked to the social worker and done everything you can and it's not a good fit. Situations and help and supports and services can come into your home and help you. But when it's respite, it's a little different. So when you're doing respite, let's say you have a child for three weeks, you do not want to displace that placement. If there is a bond that's not happening or a child that is uh, upset or angry or screaming or crying, that child really needs to stay for the full time of respite that you have committed for that child. And so my recommendation to you if you are considering respite care or considering getting licensed as a foster parent would be to not jump in to big long respites for kids in age brackets that maybe you're not sure of. Maybe you like older kids that are school age, but you don't know if you could handle a toddler and a toddler comes into your home and you've committed for a long period of time. I would recommend taking a child for respite for a couple days, taking each age group that you are considering and you're licensed for, and then when you get comfortable, then take longer and longer respite placements. If this is something that you maybe are concerned about, because once that child is in your home, they really do benefit most by staying there until their foster family can come back to get them. The six maybe con of respite care would be this, that transitions can be hard. I have a kiddo that is so hard for transitions and I know a lot of kids in foster care struggle with transitions. So many kids in foster care get moved and moved, a lot of times not at any fault to themselves. It could be a request from biological family members. It could be the foster family is going through a crisis and they need a child moved or maybe they're not um, equipped to take that child. But children in foster care move an awful lot. And so just to be super honest, sometimes respite can be hard. A good start might be to meet with the foster family and get to know the child and their environment or to take the respite slow so that they can come to meet you, to do it, do something like that so that that foster child um, doesn't feel yet another change. In addition to that, kids that come into um, your care as a respite provider often as well are required to do visits with biological family members. And if you've been a foster parent for any amount of time, you know the triggers and the emotions and the the resurface trauma that can happen when kids sometimes go to visit with their biological family members. That's just something to consider if you are thinking about being a respite provider. The seventh con um, of doing respite care is this, 
that often, and I can attest to this, you bond with these respite kids that are in your care, sometimes immediately. Sometimes there's a crazy bond that they just seem to fit in your family. And again, we just had that this summer to where um, we just had kids that they just they just felt like they were part of our home and our family. They were amazing. And we actually had them multiple times because we loved, loved having them for a placement. And sadly, the downfall sometimes of respite care is that they do leave. They do have a foster family that they go back to. And so the bonding and again, that heart you know, your heart as a foster parent when they leave, it can feel a little tugged at. Um, but to know that even in that time that you did respite, you made a difference. You made a difference for the foster family and even for that foster child. And these are my final thoughts. Respite care can be really super rewarding because Really, when you get kids, you've all probably heard about the honeymoon phase, right? They come to a new home for about six months, sometimes more, sometimes less. Kids are kind of learning the ropes, and so they're really well-behaved and really polite and really nice. So when you do respite, you are getting the best side of these kids. Often they are the sweetest and kindest and they are polite and they are loving. And so it can be so rewarding to know that you've had this opportunity to really bond with these kids, but also to help another foster family. And what I found when you go to help another foster family by doing respite, when you decide to get long-term placements, that family is also potentially available to do respite for you. So again, one of the best things about being a respite licensed provider is that you build bonds, you build bridges with lots of social workers, therapists, with biological family, and with other foster parents. I hope this video has helped you a little bit about the seven pros and cons of being a licensed respite worker. If it has benefited you in any way, please again subscribe and come back again for more videos on respite care. Thanks for watching. Now remember, go out, live bold, be brave, and we will see you next time.